views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. The following audio is via a Skype call. You are listening to Life Design Radio, from adversity to awesome, with me, Susan DiLorenzo. Tune in each month as I join with Dr. Pat and offer up the best tools for pulling the gems from adversity and designing a life you would really love. Have you experienced adversity in your life? Are you ready to leverage it and create a life you really love? No matter where you are in your adversity story, the topics on Life Design Radio are here to inspire reassure, enlighten, and motivate you. Why wait? Let's get started. (laughs) I'm telling you, welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. Life Design Radio with Susan DiLorenzo and me. This is about looking at moving from adversity to awesome. But today, what are we talking about? You know, today we're going to be talking about what I think, (laughs) what I think is the upside downs, uh, mm. left ways, right ways, circle ways, all of the all of the many ways that you wake up one day and boom, there it is, smack dab in your face is something <laughs> you didn't expect. So today we're looking at how we sometimes, I don't know about you, Susan, <laughs> how we sometimes have to take one step back and two step forward. Yeah. Um, that's what we're talking about today. Susan DiLorenzo, as many of you know, is a fantastic coach. But more importantly, she completely understands what adversity is and also how to move beyond it. She also understands how do we coach other people so that we don't get derailed from a life situation. And that is an important lesson. You know, one of my favorite, favorite mentors, Viktor Frankl, somebody Mm. I've learned an enormous amount from, the most horrific situation, found some wisdom and insight in how he responded to being locked up every day, wondering if he was going to live concentration camp, watching the people around him die. But Mm. today, let's talk about how each of us can create that same camp within ourselves. And so today we're talking about put the gorilla suit, put it on, put that gorilla suit on and magnetize the life you love. Susan, awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Pat. Thank you so much. It's awesome to be with you. I love being with you. I love considering with our listeners, whether they're with us here live or listening at a later date, to get us all remembering what is truly possible, that we are greater than any circumstance. And that is certainly what Viktor Frankl pulled out of his example. I find that most of us believe that we must do something before we're able to have what we want and be the person that's living that life that we think is for others, but not for us. But boy, would I love that. And I want to share that I think it's the opposite, that we start with the being and then doing what we can with what we have so that we can have, yes, indeed, the life that lights us up from the inside out. So I know many of us were brought up to believe that if we worked hard, uh, we could have more in our lives and then we could be a success. But I want to replace this notion with a widespread belief that's from an age-old formula. I mean, we're talking pre-biblical here for authentic success, and it really begins with who am I really, and what does the person have? Uh, What are they doing? What are they reading? What are their habits? And how can I adopt those and embody those? So if I can, Pat, I have a silly story. I'd like to share with us to illustrate this. Let's do it. So there's this guy, and he's been out of work. And it's been months, and he's getting desperate. One day, he sees something on Craigslist. 
It says position for immediate hire. No experience necessary, will train, must be able to keep confidentiality. We'll pay $300 a day. The man's like, all right, I'm desperate. I'm going to check this out. And sure enough, he gets an interview. It was a series of interviews, psychological testing, physical endurance testing. And at the end of the week, they said, you know what, pal, you got it. You, you passed all the tests. So let's tell, let's tell you now what's going to happen. The gorilla at the city zoo has escaped. And we need you to put on a gorilla suit and act like the gorilla until we can find them. We don't want to alarm the population. So we're counting on you to take care of being a gorilla. We're going to train you on how he moves, how he acts, what he eats, and you will spend all day earning $300 a day until we get that gorilla back. And the man was a little taken aback, but he thought, man, I could really use the money, and hey, it could be fun. So they get him in the gorilla suit. They put him through the test. He's thumping his test. He's eating gorilla food. It's a beautiful green uh, setting with vines. He's learning to swing on the vines. He's doing crazy antics. Finally, there's tons of kids that are coming to see this awesome gorilla at the zoo. The word is out. People are coming by the busloads, and he is loving it. He's swinging from the vines. He's <laughs> making faces at the people. And one day, he got a little too effusive swinging on that vine, and over the moat he goes into the lion's den. The lion notices him, starts walking slowly. The gorilla, or the guy inside, is trying not to panic. But the lion is getting closer and closer to the point where he can't stand it. The lion's like three feet away. He yells, help, help me. And the lion comes up to him and says, quiet, you fool, or you'll get us all fired. So the story behind that is really goofy. (laughs) But the idea is... Oh, my gosh, here is this guy willing to do anything to get what he wants, which right now is a job. But what do we want? We can learn a lot from this guy, beginning with how he first had to study and learn all he could about being a gorilla, taking on the gorilla habits, the responses and mannerisms. And remember that he got into it even more as the responses build, as he saw more success with what he was doing, he really went for it. And so I love to say that most of us were trained to go after who we want to be uh, and, and we have it backwards that, you know, we keep ourselves stuck by believing we have to have it all or we just can't do it. We have to have the money. We have to have the education. You know, we have to have the house before we can have a great party. We make it all about what we must have before we can do anything and then we can be that person we'd love to be. But what if it was just starting like this guy? Okay, I'm doing it. I'm being. uh, For me, I wanted to be a writer. And I had to still go into a corporate job where I didn't do a whole lot of writing. And I started showing up in that same desk with a new identity. And that's what I'm asking all of us to do. First, we have to know what that would be. So we want to become very interested in what the person who is living or would be living our dream life, what are they thinking? What habits are they embracing? What activities do they participate in? And most of all, and I should say equally important, who are they hanging out with? What are they reading? Who do they follow on social media? And how do they keep themselves current and relevant to what they do? So here I am, I'm training to be a coach, but I'm still working in corporate. And it was obvious I wasn't there yet. I was still working this corporate job, and I was bored. And and if I had to keep showing up just thinking I was that person who hoped to one day be a coach and a writer and, yeah, a speaker, I would just be so frustrated. But once I flipped it on its head and I started showing up as the coach, as the writer – Keep doing what I love in the meantime. In the meantime, I'm setting up my website. I am writing a monthly blog. I'm starting to speak publicly. And yeah, I'm certified as a coach and I'm starting to get clients. Yeah. But when I thought it was a someday move, it felt so far away. If, if we think we're going to go after something, it's always out in front of us. When we can embody 
that feeling of being that person that we would love to be before life even shows us we have it in our lives, that is a game-changing move. And that's what we're going to talk about more today. Yeah. It, well, you know, Susan, what you're saying is, and, and I really want to talk about this before we go to break. You know, what you're saying is something that we've heard um, decades and decades and decades yes. and decades. And that is act as if it's already so. Act as if it's already yeah. so. And even though we hear that, right, uh, we see it in our sports industry, um, you hear stories That's all the right. time about people that are champions, what they did. They acted as if that Olympian gold was already theirs, you know, act as if it's already. Yet we have difficulty. Ev- us average everyday people that are not Olympians, <laughs> we have difficulty saying that that could work for us, too. We're going to take a short break. We come back. She's going to take us on a journey about not only does it work for us too, but we are busting the crust out of any limited thinking as to how long, how long something has to take. When we come back, let's talk about this and talk about who are the people we're not just hanging out with, but who are the people we are reaching out to reaching out to what stops us if we want to be a best-selling author what stops us from emailing texting tweeting friending jk rowling except Mm. that she's not accepting any more friends let's take a (laughs) (laughs) let's take a short break we'll be right back Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Ignite your inner magic on Grow Your Soul Radio with Jane Matanga. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as host Jane Matanga explores how to overcome your fears to help you gain the inspiration you need to awaken your path to joy. Learn the way to life mastery and the enlightened path with Grow Your Soul Radio. For more information on Jane Matanga and her work, visit enlightened-path.com. Tune in to The Astral Insider, your portal for adventure, insight, and growth with Fernando Albert. And get ready to tour the astral realm, expand your life in ways you've never imagined, and call in for the journey of your life with this world-renowned lucid dreamer, astral projectionist, psychic medium, and healer, Fernando Albert. This is every second and fourth Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are you done being afraid to jump into the life that's waiting for you? Are you ready for a real shift? I invite you to tune in every Tuesday with me, Tracy L, on The Tracy L. Clark Show, where we will teach you how to live your extraordinary life. At 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where I will provide the tools and the steps needed to help you transcend perceived limitations and move forward with an extraordinary life. For more information, visit me at TracyLClark.com. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. 
If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, This is Life Design Radio. I'm Dr. Pat. I get to do this great show with Susan DiLorenzo. Look, before we jump in here and talk about, you know, the company we keep making or breaking us, um, before we jump into that, because I think that's so very important. It's so many ways. Uh, let's find out what you're up to. How can people find out more about you? You're also going to be doing an event. Tell us all about it. Yes, thank you, Pat. Well, first of all, you all can find me at my website, SusanDiLorenzo.com. You can message me there, or you can email me, Susan at SusanDiLorenzo.com. And I just want to thank everyone in Sarasota, Florida, for joining me for my workshop at the Unity uh, on how we can use adversity to launch into our new life. I just want to thank everyone for supporting me and showing up for that. We did some great work there. And then next month, I'm, I'm speaking at the Relay for Life in the state, for the state of Rhode Island uh, as we kick off to really honor survivors of, of cancer and, and, and to put the spotlight on the power of coming together for a great cause and for living in tribute to those who don't make it. I think that's the greatest thing. When I think about the women that I surrounded myself with in a support group for in, during chemo, not all of us made it. And I just love to think about the, the way we can live our lives. And you know that phrase, live our dash. And mm-hmm. that's actually what we're talking about here today is the idea that you know, we don't like to talk about the fact that this is going to end someday. Yes, the soul is eternal, but we got to turn in the car. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, I, I think um, making every day count, no matter what's happened to us, and, and in spite of it, and in tribute to the resilience in us that we're still here after something cruddy. And so who are we? Yes, we're looking at that today. We're looking at who do I embody as my best self, as the person doing, like I knew I was a natural at connecting with people, sharing compassion, sharing a message, sharing encouragement that gets other people wanting to do this stuff. And so I had to edit out the habits and mindsets that didn't align with that person I longed to be. And that's what I'm asking all of us to do here today. Even in my daily media feeds like Facebook, I weeded out negative vibes. I weeded out criticism, mocking other people, anything that felt like I had to make someone less than me in order to feel more powerful. Instead, I started to quote unquote like people in groups that inspire and motivate me and it's great to have a feeling of being a part of great thinkers and doers you can make a community even virtually (laughs) first and then get out there and really do it ask yourself if posts bring you up or down uh, what are you feeding your head what are you agreeing with also check in on the energy you're putting out there does that align with what you say you want to do so that is a a big big recommendation on my part the other thing we've talked about is creating a vision board or an inventory of the qualities of the person you'd love to really be um, to support your becoming and keep you engaged with your vision Uh, I had one that was just, you know, right after cancer and the end of my marriage where, you know, I put everything about happiness and true love and a deep connection to God, having fun and traveling and, of course, vibrant health. And I kept it in my bedroom where it greeted me every time I entered. And I spent time seeing myself in the picture. And I call that putting on the gorilla suit and experiencing the feelings, the pictures and the words I selected. So it's the goal here is just to become this vibrational match 
to those same feelings that you get when you consider that vision, when you put yourself in the vision. And here's the good news. You don't have to be perfect at this. It's a more often than not game. But the more consistent, insistent, and persistent we are, the better our results. So yeah. here's a couple of tricks I learned, Pat. Yeah, let's what? talk about it. Because, you know, the, the analogy that I think about hmm. has to do with the arts, um, any art, whether it's yeah. your five-year-old and the first kindergarten play. The yeah. one thing that happens in any of those arenas, everything from uh, putting on a play to being in the military, right, uh, it's called the dress rehearsal. Now, yeah. different groups call it different things. But the point is this. You, you put on what you're going to wear for when yeah. you go live everybody does exactly what they practice for maybe an entire life and they go through the motions even before the thing happens right yes they get to feel this that the event in their skin so what did you discover on how to help people step in the skin that they're about to grow yeah, there's a couple of ways because we're going to forget and go back to our old way of thinking. We've been uh, me 1.0 for a lot longer than me 2.0, right? So we're we're trying to do the upgrade, but there's going to be stuff. So how do we remember in the moment? There was a couple of things I learned. One was every time I touch a doorknob, who am I? Who am I being right now? Or another one can be turning on a light switch. And, and these days, you know, consider how much we check our phone. What if we checked in on ourselves at that time as well? Who am I embodying? Who am I showing up as right now? And here's where we go to considering, well, what kind of people does the ideal me hang out with? Because the company we keep really does determine a lot about our level of success. And that doesn't mean we're going to get rid of everyone. It just means we're going to really consider how we're spending our time with people and who are we putting in our circle. You know, um, motivational speaker Jim Rohn is known for saying that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. And Jim used the law of averages to demonstrate this effect on human relationships. So I'm just asking you all to consider what this might mean in your social universe. So, you know, it's not meant to make us feel bad <laughs> and drop all our friends or, you know, it's just be aware. Awareness is the key here, especially if you have friends who are also hungry for more and striving for better like you are. If that's the friend you have, then you are already blessed with a partner in believing. But if your bunch believes it's dog eat dog, that it's impossible to get ahead. You are in the Misery Loves Company group, and you really need to consider how much time and credence you want to give this stuff because is the person you are trying to emulate thinking of this stuff? Not much. Uh, it's kind of like checking your closet to see if the clothes are going to suit your new job, the new you. So we don't disown our family, but we can keep some at arm's length on how much bandwidth we're going to give that person. We don't have to spend a ton of time with them and certainly not agree and participate in beliefs and criticisms that don't serve us, that don't serve the world, really. So changing the subject is one way I found. Another was finding a distraction. Both of those just take people off topic. And, and then, yes, be compassionate. Avoid criticizing people like a holier-than-thou moment. I don't go for that. I just stay quiet or I change the subject. Those are my two biggest go-tos. Um, I, I, there's, can you comment on one thing, though, Yes. Uh, related to this, which I think is super important? Um, you know, the thing that I've heard time and time again um, has been the notion that, well, look, I mean, I'm not going to. I'm not going to leave my husband. I'm not going to leave my life, my wife. I'm not going to disown my family. Um, one of the things that I learned, and I think you touched upon it, but I think it's worth clarifying, is I learned a long time ago from uh, uh, reading a book by Catherine Ponder, which was mm. don't share your idea before it's time. That's you know, right. keep your vision and your dream sacred to yourself. Right. Yes. It's and, like a little sprout. You're yeah. not going to just invite everyone to go stomp on your little sprout. <laughs> so you're just inventing yourself. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think she used an analogy. I don't think it was a sprout, but let's stay with the sprout analogy. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to plant a sprout and then tell the rabbits in your yard where that plant <laughs> is, right? Because That's right. by the very nature of who they are, they're going to come over and they're going to have lunch. Um, <laughs> and so when we think about the people in our lives, we know who they are. We're not right. saying that who they are is good, bad, or indifferent. What I think you're right. saying is we have to be aware more That's than right. ever of you know, who we are and who the people in our lives are so that we can adjust how we act in the world. I want to put a plug in for a good friend of mine who wrote a book called Unipreneur, How to Grow Your Dream in a House Full of Dream Killers. <laughs> and it was written by Laura Shortridge. It's on Amazon. And I loved it because she was in a position also where she really wanted to go for it. And her family are like, are you crazy? You know, they're giving her every reason. Listen, people want to keep us safe. It's not to hurt us. They just don't want to see us fall on our faces. But there's only one way to do this. And that is with risk. Risk of everything to go for it and not be afraid of failing. So once she started succeeding, they cut her some slack. So yes, do it on your own or only with those you can trust. Uh, and that's, that's great advice, Pat. That is yeah. great advice. Well, we're going to talk about this in the next segment when we come back. Susan DiLorenzo. And that is when we engage and we enter into this new gateway of our lives, right? It's a door that we've never been through before. Right. We've never been through it before. It's something new that we're embarking on, whether it's writing a book, going back to school, raising a child, whatever that is. It may be fresh and it may be new to us. And so what do we do when we have so many energies operating at one time? What do we do to make sure we don't lose sight of the truth of who we are? What do we do to look at? a potential identity crisis. I've had one. I don't know about you, but I had one in my corporate job where that corporate job was, for whatever reason, I still don't know it to this day. It didn't feel right anymore. My identity as a corporate executive, regardless of how much money and what my future was, didn't feel right anymore. What the heck do you do when it just don't feel right anymore? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. You never speak of all these things, all these worries that you dream. Are you ready to broadcast your brand idea with the latest in information technology? Bioresonance software distills your brand ideal or intention and enhances your core internal organizing principle. This has a tremendous impact on your organization's alignment as well as the behavior, satisfaction, and the retention of its employees. Your physical business structure can unfurl, opening up the possibilities of creating an energetic presence for a brand, even ahead of its launch. Check out JeanetteWolf.com for more on a signature frequency branding. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. If you have a sense that you are meant for more, join Heather Allison every third Tuesday at noon Pacific as she explores an ancient, forgotten energy within us and helps us access our original archetypal blueprint. The Golden Path will help you remember the key to unlocking your life, love, success, and magic you were meant for. A key to unlocking your golden path. Visit heather-allison.com. Dream on, lie high, and live adventurously on The Laura Meeks Show. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as host Laura Meeks guides you in finding your unique gifts and bringing them to life. As a certified life coach, speaker, and veteran bomber pilot for the U.S. Air Force, Laura knows how to follow a dream. 
She is ready to support you so you can dream on, fly high, and live adventurously. For more information on Laura and her work, visit flyhighliving.com. Join the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Tune in each month as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia Stephanie is a spiritual teacher, passionate speaker, published author, and founder of the Empower Network. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. For more information, go to CorneliaStephanie.com. Have you been searching for a push to step out and share your gifts with the world? Allow Charlene Hess to empower you to start shedding the layers of your ego that are holding you back and begin feeling connected to your heart so that you can shine your unique divine light and share your gifts with the world. Tune in to The Charlene Hess Show, Living on Your Heart's Edge, every third Friday at noon Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information, visit CharleneHess.com. Wow, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. You know, this is really a great, great topic for those of you out there that are thinking about your future, but also thinking about in the context of your present. And you're thinking about, well, here's where I am today. You know, my life may or may not be the shining example of what I want it to be. But in the scheme of things, what is it that Susan Lorenzo has learned through her own challenges that now she shares with people all over the world? And so, you know, Life Design Radio is all about this. But today in particular, you know, what we're looking at, we're really looking at what it is in our lives even when the gorilla shows up, what it is in our <laughs> lives that can help us decide, know, and then do. See, decide, know, and then do. Now, I want to reverse that because the way it actually works, even though we don't know it works like that, is that we get a knowing then we decide, then we do. Before we jump into this, especially the conversation about identity crisis, I think I've had a bunch of them. Um, thank goodness I don't have to do that one now. Um, I, I, I'm more clear about who I am in the world than I've ever been. And yet at the same time, uh, I look forward to seeing who I'm going to become. Yes. Let's talk about identi identity crisis for a minute and what that has come to mean to you. Yeah. So I, you know, I told this crazy joke about a guy having to be put on a gorilla suit to earn, a, earn his living and being scared by a lion and breaking his uh, identity as the gorilla and <laughs> going back to the help, help. <laughs> so all kinds of doubts and challenges are always going to come up and test our will and ability to hold a vision in the midst of things that appear to be the opposite of our dream. You know, your old fears and doubts are going to pull out all the stops to bring you back to what I call you 1.0 and me 1.0. How do I know this? Because it happened to me, that old, who do you think you are? You are nothing like these people. You, you know what's so tricky about that voice, Pat, is it sounds like our own voice. And do you think that voice for truth, that still small voice that we hear about, would ever speak to us that way? It's no. If you hear a voice like that, if you hear are hearing panic and criticism, that is not your guiding light. It's an old recording, always on standby, but you'll get better at recognizing it and redirecting your self-talk to something that cancels out the negativity and reaffirms the truth about you. And what is that truth? The truth is you and I are greater than any circumstance. But we forget that in the midst of things that come to rattle us. And did you know, I don't know if I've said this on this show before, did you know it takes seven miles for an ocean liner to turn around? 
And think about that. In that seven miles, imagine what it looks like. It's like, what the heck's going on? I thought we were going to Bermuda, you know? (laughs) And it's the same thing with our fearful mind. This is when the phrase that I love comes in really handy. When all is swirling about me and I still am working on being the person I came here to be, I say, this is what it looks like. Well, everything's coming together for me. It's a great phrase to have on hand. Imagine if you just looked around you while all the craziness was going on and you were still at that level of being who you came here to be, who you know you'd love to be in the face of all these fearful thoughts that crop us around us, as I like to say, as we're sashaying around in our gorilla suit. So we can at least, if we can't, cancel these thoughts we can at least subdue them i think you've heard me say uh buckling up our fear in the back seat so that we our authentic self can drive the car now i know we're using a lot of metaphors here folks (laughs) but the idea is you want to be the driver and you let fear go in the back it's going to come up things are going to look not at all like you want them to especially as you're starting out But you will get there if you maintain in a more often than not pattern. Like when I was starting out with a new vision for myself as a coach, an author, a speaker who is experiencing great success, fun, and love, I would recite my vision in the car on my way to work to my corporate job. And I would be driving along and I'd begin, I am so happy and grateful Now that I am a successful published author and widely in demand life coach who helps others overcome adversity and live the life of their dream. And I would go on from there, waxing poetic about my awesome life. And I would get so caught up in it. And actually, one day, I was so involved and in the moment that I actually missed my exit to my world, my job, and I had to turn around and go back. And I was just laughing, thinking, wow, that was good. <laughs> I did it so well. Like I was actually leaving uh, what looked like uh, the highway reality of things. So the added bonus these days is that anyone who looks over at us while we're driving and doing this can just assume we're on our Bluetooth. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, another fun one I used to do I would pretend that I was being interviewed by Oprah, (laughs) and I would pretend I was listening to Oprah sing my praises and ask me questions about uh, my tricks of the trade and about my life, and think about that. When we were... Nothing for us to do, right? We would just be who we wanted to be, whether it was a ballerina or a, a superhero, we would just be that, and, and we would have fun with it. And that's what I'm asking us all here to do is, yes, have fun with this stuff. I would, get, I would crack myself up after my interview with Oprah. <laughs> and it's just a great time to notice the feeling tone, that feeling tone as we're being that person, whether we're driving in the car or Uh, being interviewed in our fake interview with Oprah. It's just that idea that we're playing full on as a person who's living our dream. And we can take that anywhere in the household, you know, at the sink washing dishes, even that, walking the dog. You know, you can embody the person you want to be at any moment. And that is what I'm encouraging here today. It's just practice this stuff. It's going to feel goofy at first if you've never done it. But please have fun with it. One of the things I want to ask you is, and we're going to talk about this more, is that what we're talking about here today is really to find and really look at the uh, that voice of ours that is considered our true voice. Some people call it true north. I never really understood what that meant. Hmm. Um, You know, one of the things I love is that I had an experience in the desert that reminds me of how easy it is to get off track with um, our passion, our purpose, what we are so being called to do in this world. And, you know, let me just say this. Uh, At some points in time in my life, it was simply getting up, going to work, working a long day, coming home, you know, walking the dog. That was it. Right. Other days it was get up, 
from my nine to five job, go to the go to the fish deli, <laughs> work there five hours, and then work a graveyard shift. That was some days, right? Wow. That was it. Yeah. Um, but what we're talking about here today is whatever it is for you, you know, if your job at the moment is to make ends meet. And yes, I did right. say that. All of my new thought friends are going to email me. But the reality <laughs> is yeah. that people in our, uh, you know, Uniscope are, Many of are us doing have done that. This. Yes, yeah. And that's what they're doing. But here's what I've learned. If you're ever in a desert and you're ever lost, like I've been lost in the high desert in Sierra, one of the illusions you have is that if you're looking at a mountain which appears to be straight ahead of you, that you actually are going to be able in the desert to walk a straight line to get there. And the reality is that the minute you take a step of a quarter of an inch to the left, just a quarter of an inch to the left, your trajectory of mm -hmm. where you are to end up Whole is literally... Place. Yeah. Hundreds of miles. Isn't that and I wonderful? Think that's what we're talking about today in making sure that even if we do have an identity crisis, we can always get back to back on track. Zero, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I have, I agree wholeheartedly with that. And it's just about really being compassionate with ourselves. You know, that there are the facts, right? We have facts about our bank account about what we're doing now to pay the mortgage, pay the electric bill. Yeah, those are facts, but there's the truth. And the truth is why, that's our why we keep going and going for the person and being the person that came here to do something greater than the nine to five job. And there's nothing wrong if you love your nine to five job, please don't misunderstand me. If you're doing what you love, it doesn't matter what time of day you're doing it. It's just a phrase. But the idea is we have facts that are all around us, but we are more than the facts. We are here to show up and do what we love. Life is too short to just, you know, that phrase from that old, uh, what was it commercial time to make the donuts that guy did not look as thrilled about the donuts did he uh, so yes show up and keep coming back don't let this stuff stop you uh, you've heard of people that have probably had less than you and I have had and done great things and it's because they've done the work that's the only difference between uh, where we are now and where we want to be. It's just about the minds, the belief system and doing what you can with what you have. And you usually have so much more than you think you do, especially once you get started. Life is doing, they're like cheerleaders in heaven saying, she's doing something. Now we can give her this and now we can give her that. You allow life to meet you where you are now and show up. If you're not doing anything, there's nothing that can show up other than the same old stuff, different day. But when you take it upon yourself to be the person, to do what you can with what you have, the magic starts and the magic continues. And yes, sometimes you'll have a little bit of a, you know, desert area where you're like, wow, I'm doing all this stuff. And then bam, all of a sudden it like made up for lost time and, and in comes awesome opportunity. And the funniest little way, so you do want to be aware of that and pay attention because, like I said, there's more than you think you have around you. Oh, and well, here's the other thing I want to add to that that I love to say. The first currency of the universe is ideas. So that's where we start. Cash in on those ideas. <laughs> all right. Well, look, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about two things, deserving and desire. Deserving and desire. What happens when the degree by which we desire can absolutely equal the degree by which we believe we deserve to achieve? Stay tuned, everybody. Susan DiLorenzo will be right back. How often do you find yourself wondering, why me? Learn a new shift in perspective to see how everything that takes place in your life is actually working for you and shifting you towards your own enlightenment. 
Tune in to Blank Enlightenment Radio with Misty Thompson each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more, visit MistyMThompson.com. That's MistyMThompson.com. Are you ready for unfiltered gratitude, unfiltered frequency, and unfiltered creation? Then don't miss Mike Murphy Unfiltered on TransformationTalkRadio.com Thursday from 12 to 2 Pacific Time as Mike Murphy and a cast of powerful guests discuss and demonstrate the principles and practices of the creation frequency. Tune in to unleash the power of your mind. Open the immense energy of the heart to manifest an awesome life filled with true health, wealth, confidence, gratitude, and joy. Unfiltered truth and unfiltered frequency to uncover and let go of limiting beliefs and access your powerful intentions that resonate out into the universe with Mike Murphy Unfiltered. For more information on Mike and his work, visit his website at MikeMurphyUnfiltered.com. Are you searching? searching? Looking for a sign? A message you need to hear? From the great unknown? From the most mysterious place? That is the most familiar to your soul in the depths of who you are. The universe puts someone here to talk to, someone God gave a blessing to, that you may find insight with. TheAngelLady.net, 1-800-323-1790. 1-800-323-1790. The truth is funny. Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit karenbenton.com. Have you ever wondered if there's a way to heal the deep, hidden inner issues, wounds, beliefs, and traumas? The journey into spiritual healing engages people in all areas of their lives to heal themselves and others. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Dr. Jaffe brings conversations of healing of body, mind, and spirit as he merges the excellence of traditional medicine with the beauty of spiritual healing. For more information about Dr. Jaffe, this show, and his work, visit drjaffemd.com. Last night, I had a moment where I like to get caught up at the end of the day. Um, I've got a great team of people I work with. I mean, uh, absolutely an incredible team of people. I, I mean, I'm in awe. Mm. Um, just absolutely crazy, powerful team here. I don't even understand how that even happened. <laughs> um, but we're looking at and very excited about our expansion and our technology. And this really directly relates, Susan, to what we're about to talk about next. Mm, Um, But before we jump into desire and deserving, again, how can people work with you? Let's talk about that. Yes, I would love that. And that would be by reaching out to me on my website, SusanDiLorenzo.com, S-U-S-A-N-D-E-L-O-R-E-N-Z-O. Or you can email me at Susan at SusanDiLorenzo.com. And uh, yeah, no matter where you are in your adversity story, it's worth connecting. It's uh, it's just one session, 45 minutes, and we find out what's going on and where you'd like to go. So definitely reach out to me if I can be a service to you. And just coming back now to uh, what we, we've been calling today, putting on the gorilla suit. It's the idea of first starting with being. Who is the person? What are they doing? What are they reading that I should be doing to be that person? And you heard it from me if you were listening to episode four when we covered self-esteem upgrade. Just like our associates and the feeds we're following, we would do well to edit and improve our feelings and beliefs about our level of deserving. That level where... You know what I said in that show, we cannot outperform our self-esteem, but we can work to raise it. And believe me, the person we are emulating 
has done this work too, and so must we. We tend to believe that those we admire just came out of the box perfectly formed to achieve their goals and visions, and this is so not true. Talking to so many accomplished people, the common thread I've discovered is the paper dragons they've had to slay and the forms of perceptions of themselves before they could realize their dreams. So the more we keep ourselves immersed in the vision, re-minding ourselves of our worthiness, related habits, and the circle of support we keep around us, the smoother and quicker the transformation. We really become a magnet, what I call the vibrational match to that which we embody. So it's this through this consistent winning thinking, this daily connection to our vision, and yes, daily action, however small. In my most recent uh, uh, blog, it's called uh, Raise the Vibe. I talk about bringing ourselves to a high vibration through gratitude, through feeling proud of ourselves. It doesn't have to be over giant things. We just want to keep that I'm on my way feeling. So anything that can energize us through fun activities and fun events, they're all big game changers. So yes, like keeping a daily journal of what we're grateful for, uh, what we're proud of ourselves for, it creates a great lens of perception, not only for how we're going to look at our world, but how we feel about ourselves. So you know what I'm going to advocate for next here? Me. Working with a life coach is a great way to develop a vision and stay in your vision. Being supported with, with someone who can be consistent and keep you consistent and accountable for uh, what I call game-changing action and setting a tone for yourself that you're going to keep going back to your identity, you 2.0. You can't ask for a better partner in believing than a life coach that you connect with and that knows you. We know your vision as if it were a song, and we sing it to you when you forget it. That is what I love to do. And when I see the transformation in my client, knowing I had a part in that and kept them on task, on belief, when even when things weren't looking great, we got our mindset back to the winning mindset and did say together, yeah, you know what? This is what it looks like while everything's coming together for me and I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing and believing it and allow the ideas to come flowing in so that I can keep going in a more and more successful trajectory. You know, one of the things I want to get back to that you said is this idea of keep things going. Um, yes, I, I know we only have a few minutes left, but I, I really have to point back to something we talked about when we started the show. And that was sometimes you take two steps forward, one step back. Most of my life, I would take uh, one step forward and two steps back hmm. and felt that I just couldn't get moving. The point that I think we're making, too, is and this is really important for everybody listening is. Thinking is thinking and doing is doing. Yes. But when you put thinking and doing together, you get manifestation. And yes. I think it's important to remember that because what I'm struck by and what you're not saying a whole lot about is that while this beautiful wisdom that you incorporate into your coaching program, you master the art of doing even yes. in adversity. And that yes. is critical. That is the game changer. And, you know, my mentor, uh, Mary Morrissey, has a great line. She says, uh, imagination without action is merely entertainment. And that can be a bit of an ouch to those of us who aren't doing too much. But it's the truth, Ruth. Yeah, we've got to remember that. So um, I just want to close. But if you have anything to no, add. No, go for uh, it. All right. So my message is, hey, let's have fun with this. Create a prototype for you doing what you know you would love to be doing, beginning now, when there is no outward sign of you even having it yet. So we begin with the vision. We go back to the formula we talked about today. First, we must be the person, be the gorilla, <laughs> and do what we can 
so that we can have what we really want to have is a life we would love. We put on the persona of the person doing what we'd love to do, and then we take consistent action, however small, with what we have right now. And it's more than we think, folks. So with daily enga- uh, engagement, with self-encouragement and fun, and yes, forgiveness when we fall away from this, it becomes our new normal. You get a new level of confidence and contentment and creativity comes because you keep tailing, you keep taking more steps. You keep getting more ideas. That's how it works. So this is my wish for all of us. First, really consider the life you would love, no matter what you've been through. And then the details of what this life would look like and what qualities the person living it would have. There, you've just designed your gorilla suit. Now go put it on and sashay. Susan Lorenzo, everybody. I love it. Thank you so much, Susan, for today's Thank show. Thank you, Dr. Powerful, Pat. Powerful, Goodbye. Have a great day, everybody. Yep, we're going to take a short break. We're not done yet, everybody. We'll be right back. Thank you for listening to Life Design Radio. From adversity to awesome, with me, Susan DiLorenzo. Tune in each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com as I join with Dr. Pat and offer up the best tools for pulling the gems from adversity and designing a life you would really love. No matter where you are in your adversity story, the topics on Life Design Radio are here to inspire, reassure, enlighten, and motivate you. For more information on Life Design Coaching with me or to listen to this show again, visit SusanDiLorenzo.com. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.